Uh, today I'm here to talk to you about the values that have shaped my life and how they influence my decisions every day. Uh, I'm a Muslim. We were a family that uh, owned a poultry farm, poultry factory. Uh, we, we were breeding horses. Uh, we had a textile industry going way back in the 1970s. And when I was six years old, we lost my father to a heart attack. And very soon after that, we lost our property and all our assets to business commitments and debts. So my mother, with me, and my two younger siblings, had to move out of this palatial bungalow with its big fancy cars to a single room abode. And very quickly also had to find employment. At this point, Mamu, Ashok Kashyapi, walked into our life. He was my father's friend and colleague and uh, through business. And he came in and became our local guardian. My mother very soon left to uh, work in Iraq during the 19 period, which was 1980. That was when the Iran and Iraq war was going on. Uh, jobs for nurses and paramedics were plentiful at that point. So it just made sense for her to go there and find employment. So Mamu took us in. And we were living in the outskirts and we moved closer into the city, into a 1 BHK. Uh, so that our trips to school were shorter and we didn't have to spend too much try time commuting. Uh, we moved into a Tamil neighborhood and into a home which had its owners right next door. Our new parents and caretakers, Kanan uncle and Vijay Lakshmi auntie. They became the people who would take care of us, who would bathe, feed, clothe us, send us to school every day. Mama was not staying with us at that point in time. He moved in with us when I was 11 years old. The, this time has been the most important in my life and has taught me the most uh, important values that I hold today. We were three Muslim children taken in by Mama, who was a Kannada Brahmin, growing up in a Tamil neighborhood and schooled in a Christian institution. We were taken in by strangers. The strangers who today are the family that I have grown to love. All that they have taught me stays with me till today. They have taught me what it means to be, uh, to actually hold values of empathy, of unconditional love, of open communication, of tolerance, of a strong sense of duty and responsibility. As I was growing, of course, I, um, my graduation took me through you know, the arts and then I started learning about computers. And all this time, I knew that I wanted to stay in the field of service. Even during my school holidays and my summer breaks, I would find the time to go and um, volunteer and cry or in uh, the Sheila Kotwala Institute for the Blind. There are very interesting uh, representations for cuss words and sign language, if you all didn't know. I'd be happy to share some, <laughs> some other point. <laughs> right? uh, so service has always been something that I have wanted to do. And uh, the first few years of my professional uh, career were spent in the IT sector. That was a boom time in the early 90s and everybody wanted to do IT. So I was there too. But it was really not something that I wanted to stay with. And a chance meeting with my founders, Ramesh and Swati Ramanathan, and I just latched on to Janagraha. It seemed like the place that I wanted to be. And this was in the year 2001. Yes, they had a very compelling vision, audacious to say the least. So what is our vision? We want to change the trajectory of India. That was our earlier vision. We then shifted it to say, transforming the quality of life, transforming the quality of life in India's cities and towns. And what do we mean by quality of life? It's not just the quality of your infrastructure and services. It is the quality of citizenship. Right? And where citizenship is an end in itself and not just a means to getting a better quality of life. For me, that was a chance for me to really work with community, to see can we find a way to really enable a society that will hold utmost its values of tolerance, of empathy, and of community itself. So that was a journey that began 17 years ago. And all this time, there have, it's not been an easy journey. There are many moments and periods of uh, conflicting periods of wondering what is right, what is wrong. How do you move between despair and hope? And even today, these, these conflicts do arise in the mind. Um, should I give money to the child that comes begging at the traffic signal? 
to the woman with an infant, right, uh, to the old lady, will they misuse that money? Will they actually, you know, do something that is detrimental to their own health and well-being? Should I validate that need first before I actually even give them that money? Or should I just give it to them because they asked? Who am I to judge? And over these years, I've come to a point wherein I believe that we have to give because somebody is in need. So the point is that we must give, period. We must give of our own efforts, our knowledge, our time, our care to those around us. In the years uh, of our work at Janagaha, we have we work, of course, as many of you might know, with various governments. We work on partnerships. We work on building citizenship programs. Not always do these go the way they should. And sometimes governments change. Um, we're just about to sign an MOU or an agreement, and everything moves into election mode, and then nothing happens for the next few years, right? And we still have to keep plodding along, waiting for the next leader to arrive on the scene. Um, and even at a personal level, when these questions arise, it's difficult sometimes to make choices. And you have to make choices based on your values and what you feel are the right things to do. So just to give you an example, um, my friend and I, a uh, very close friend and I, uh, we commute to work in office uh, together. And one day we noticed a young handicapped boy on the street. So we stopped, given that the two of us have similar questions on life, on purpose, on work, and see how is it that we can actually help. That was how we met Salim. Salim was a 26-year-old young man who had lost uh, the use of both his feet uh, due to a fire incident when he was very young in his hometown in Bijapur. Uh, economic difficulties and the fact that he would have been a burden on his family forced him to come to Bangalore. And very soon he was on the street begging. So, well, we said we'd help him. We took him in. We got him prosthetic, you know, uh, limbs. Uh, we trained him at Unati. Uh, he got placed in a BPO and was actually handling a Marathi process. When we realized that he has early stage or maybe even middle stage cancer of the skin, and uh, the, because of the pain and the inability to actually continue in a working environment, he quit his job. And very soon, um, the pain became really bad. We had to amputate his, you know, his leg. And um, through all this, what we uh, also were seeing is every time we were encountering the health sector or the support system that is there for people, you know, in the country, that you realize how inefficient and how incapable they are of actually responding, you know, to people like Salim. We lost Salim last November. It's a deep loss. Uh, Salim had the most enigmatic smile I have seen on anyone in my life. Um, but it, does, it hasn't deterred us. As far as I see, he was just, he was not even a statistic in India. Nobody knew him. He, he had no records. Right? Um, but that's what empowers us to go on. We can't give up. So even as much as we want to help the individual, it also is important to look at how can we help the community. So all the questions and the conflicts that arise in my mind kind of culminate when I think of the fact that, yes, we have to continue helping people like Salims, and there are so many of them around. But we also have to look at lasting impact and lasting change. And that will happen through organizations like Janagraha that I work for. To me, um, Janagraha is, an, is inextricably intertwined you know, in my life. And it's, it's an intrinsic part of my whole existence and purpose, just like Pooja mentioned about right? Uh, so there is no lines. There, there are no lines, basically. So there's nothing to cross over. There's nothing called work-life balance you know, and things like that. So, and my suggestion is don't look for it, that's when it gets really troublesome. You know, you should just go with it. Uh, so, what we seek to do in Janagaha is uh, to really impact the whole idea and the concept of citizenship. Right? Uh, how can we ensure that citizenship will be the leading force, a tectonic shift in how today we are able to build great cities, great communities, and contribute towards building a great India that where every citizen is empowered to her fullest potential and capabilities. So that is the kind of work that we are doing today. Right? It's not easy. Right? But just uh, to give you a flavor of what we have done, right? um, we have, I would say, coached or helped 
200,000 children learn what citizenship really means in over 23 cities and over 500 schools. Uh, we run the largest civic tech platform you know, in the country, possibly even otherwise, even outside of the country. It's called ichangemycity.com. For those, anybody who knows about it, oh, nice. Um, ichangemycity.com is present in a few cities, but uh, we also power the whole Swachh Bharat mission. So through that, we are uh, present in 2,800 cities today with a 9 million user base, 25 million complaints registered with a 90 plus uh, percentage of resolutions, which is all a very good thing. It's a great way to get started, but we really have a long journey to fulfill. And we're just about taking the first few steps in making that happen. In these moments of doubt and despair and wondering when governments will change, will it, our work really scale, will we be able to take it to all the cities that we want to, you know, will the fact that I want to really help individuals allow me to make lasting impact in society and how do I balance my life in doing that and doing the rest of the work through Janaga? These are constant questions that keep you know, coming to mind. But I think it's important that we stick down this path and continue to go with the resilience and the vigor to make this happen. <clears throat> And this whole aspect of resilience, the fact that we have to stay the course and give it all that we have, has come because of the childhood that I have been exposed to. The fact that everybody around me unconditionally gave of themselves, no questions asked. And in all the troublesome life that we've led, you know, uh, there would be a time when there would be only 400 rupees in the house to go for the month. And you knew that your Sunday chicken would have to wait a few more weeks. Right? But this is what taught us to value everything that we had. Uh, to share everything that we were provided with, uh, to ensure that we always carry these values of um, differing cultures, of society, of you know empathy along with us wherever we go. And uh, Kanan uncle, Vijay Lakshmi auntie, and Mamo taught us that in very small but impactful you know ways. So Tuesdays and Thursdays were visits to the temple. Right? Um, Tuesdays and Fridays, sorry. Thursday was a visit, to the, a visit to the Infant Jesus Church. For those of you in Bangalore, you know these are special days because everybody goes to these places on these days. Right? Um, this was interspersed with visits to the Gurudwara and the um, you know, Sai Baba Mandir. So a lot of exposure to things that may not have mattered to us at that point in time other than the fun of going up and doing this, but have stayed with us intrinsically and make us who we are today. And the fact that uh, these are the values that I have carried forward. And these are the values that stick with me today. These are the values that help me get over doubt, despair, you know, uh, the concerns about right, wrong, and how we should go about our work on a daily basis. Our work is not easy. We've been here 17 years. Has Bangalore changed? Are the roads better? Anybody who's saying the roads are better? <laughs> yeah, so the roads are not better, right? Has corruption reduced? No, right? Do we have a great quality of air? Do we have great parks, playgrounds? No, still a lot of work to be done. But the determination to stay this course, the uh, ability to go to office every day with the passion and the perseverance and the grit to say that I'll make this happen is what was imbibed in us when we were little children. And most of us may not have seen it at that point, but you only see it once you start applying this later on you know, in life. And so what I want to leave you with is the fact that uh, one is Always go with your gut instinct. It never, it's never wrong. It always tells you the right thing to do. Right? Deeply look at the values that you have and actually let them allow you to go forward. Let them guide you in where you want to go. That is what has guided me in Janagra. That's what helps me stay there. I can't think of a life where this work is not part of my existence. Right? So that's how, that's how your work should be for you. I'm sure there are many such stories in the audience today many such windows of beauty uh, that we are able to see. Um, I thank you for giving me this opportunity to share my story with you. And if any of you want to join us in our work, I'm only a mail or a call away. So please write to me.